All right, so in some cases, we may need to use something called a nested loop. And this is basically where a loop is run inside of another loop. So let me start off with a very simple example here. So I'm just gonna go a for loop here, and I'm gonna let i equal zero. I'm gonna go i is less than, let's say five, and then i plus plus. Okay, so what I'm gonna do to start, let's just do what we, what we know. So I'm gonna console.log, you could just console.log i, but let's use some backticks here, and I'm just going to put something like the current value of i is, and then we'll put a colon here, oh, let me put this like this, dollar sign curly braces, i, okay? So basically this is gonna print the current value of i is zero, then the current value of i is one. And we're gonna get this all the way till four, right? When i gets updated to five, this is no longer true, so it's gonna stop running. So let's go ahead and pop open the terminal and run this, and you get this exactly as we expected. The current value of i is zero through the current value of i is four. Okay, so nothing new there. But let's say, for example, we wanted to introduce another little for loop, okay? So a loop inside of a loop. So I'm gonna go four, I'm gonna let, let's use j, okay? And I'm gonna set that equal to zero. I'm gonna say j is less than five, and then I'm gonna go j plus plus, okay? So all I'm gonna do here is something simple. So console.log, I'll just say something like, let's just do j, dollar sign curly braces with j, okay? So this guy is going to basically go zero through four, okay? So it's gonna start at zero, then it's gonna go one, then two, then three, then four. But basically you have to think about how this is working. The first time through, so when this guy comes through here, this is the inner part or the code block here associated with the outer for loop, okay? So when i is zero, all of this is going to run, okay, before it updates to one and then it all runs again. So let's think about how this works. First, it's gonna console.log, the current value of i is, in this case, zero, okay? Then we're gonna go through this entire for loop. So we're gonna let j equal zero, j is less than five, and we have the j plus plus here. So basically, we're gonna console.log, we have j here, right now it's zero, then it gets updated to one, then two, then three, then four, okay? When it gets to five, this is false, so we're done here, so now we're coming back up, and we're updating i instead of zero, now it's one, so now we get the current value of i is one, right? So on and so forth, it's gonna keep doing this to where you get the current value of i is zero, okay, and then you get all the j's, j, j 0 through 4, then the current value of i is 1, then j 0 through 4, and it's going to just keep doing that until you get to the current value of i is 4, okay, with j 0 through 4. So let's pop this open and clear this and run this, and you see that you get, if I come back up here, the current value of i is 0, then the current value of i is 1, the current value of i is 2, current value of i is 3, the current value of i is 4, and in each case we're going through that kind of inner loop there to get the j 0 through 4. Okay, now one thing you could do if you wanted to make that more cleanly, when you're working with these things, you can put a little border at the end of stuff. So you could do something like console.log, and I'm just going to put some, inside of quotes, just a little visible border. This is something that a lot of tutorials will show. This is completely optional. If you run this now, it makes it a little bit easier to see your different iterations of the loop, right? So this is basically the first iteration of the outer loop where the current value of i is zero, we go through all the j's and you have your border and then you have the second iteration, the third, the fourth, and then finally the fifth. Okay, so that's easy enough. Let's go ahead and clear this out. And another example I wanna do here, we know how to make a little multiplication table. If we were to take a pen and a piece of paper and kind of write this out, you could do something like zero times zero equals zero. And then you could do something like, let's say zero times one still equals zero, you know, so on and so forth. If you wanted to do this for the numbers from zero up to 10, you could do this with some nested loops, right? So I'm just gonna go four. I'm gonna let i equal zero, and I forgot my parentheses there, so four. I'm gonna let i equal zero. And then basically I wanna go i is less than, let's go up to 10, so I'm gonna go less than 11, or you could do less than or equal to 10, whatever you wanna do there. And I'm just gonna go i plus plus. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go four, and I'm gonna let something like j equal zero. I'm gonna go j is, again, less than 11, and then j plus plus. Okay, so let's go ahead and come in here, and I'm just gonna console.log. If you think about how the multiplication table works, again, I'm just gonna use some back ticks, and I'm gonna go dollar sign curly braces. I'm gonna go i, okay, which is the current value for i, starts out at zero, and then times dollar sign curly braces j, okay? So this starts out at zero. So this is gonna go zero times zero to start, okay? And then basically, j is gonna keep updating while i stays the same at first, right? So i is stuck at zero while we're going through this 
first loop of j. So it's going to be j is 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6, then 7, then 8, then 9, then 10, okay? Finally, when it gets to 11, this is done, and we come back up here, we're updating i to be 1. So then it's 1 here, and it starts over with 0 here. So 1 times 0, then 1 times 1, you know, so on and so forth. And I'm just going to put equals dollar sign curly braces. Again, you can do math inside of here. So i times j, okay? So let's put this out here. And again, if you want to put a little uh, border here, between these guys, you can do that. I suggest it for readability, but again, it's up to you, personal preference. Pop this open and clear this, and let's go ahead and run this, and again, you get a little multiplication table. So you gotta come all the way back up here to view it, but basically we're starting with all the zeros, so zero times zero, zero times one, zero times two, you know, so on and so forth. That's The result of that is always zero. Then you get your ones, right? So one times zero, one times one, one times two. One times any number is always itself, right? So that's why if you multiply something by one, like one times eight, you just get eight. Okay. Then you get the twos, then you get the threes, the fours, the fives, the six, the sevens, the eights, the nines, so on and so forth until you get to the tens, right? So we're done with 10 times 10 is 100. Now, if you wanted to, you could extend this if you wanted to, and this sometimes takes a while. So let's, let's just keep it to something like 100, right? So this will go up to 99. So let's go up to 100. Let's pop open the terminal. Let's see that real quick. So it's going to run through these guys. So it's already done. So basically, it went all the way up to 99 times 99. But if you scroll through these guys, and I mean, this is quite the output, right? You can, I'll let you check this on your own, but basically you you end up with all of these, right? So it's let's just take this one. So you have 98 times zero, then basically goes all the way through, right? All the way through, you get to the point where it's 98 times 99, right? So basically, I'll let you play with that on your own. And I'm just going to do another little example here. So let's wipe this out and let's do a little store inventory example. So I'm going to go const store inventory, okay? And this is going to be an array and I'm going to have basically sub arrays inside of here. So again, we're working with nested arrays. So I'm going to have an array in here and let me just start with something like the item. So the item and then we're going to want something like, let's say the price and then we're going to want something like, let's say the current inventory. Okay, so the amount of inventory that we have. So I'm just going to copy this real quick. Okay, so I don't have to keep typing that. And then I'm going to put a comma here. And let's just put a few of these in here. And we'll just type them until we get tired. I like to put a lot of stuff in the example. Okay, so let's start off with maybe like a computer. So a computer, let's say the price is going to be, I don't know, 1500 bucks, 1500 bucks. And let's say for the inventory, we have 25 on hand. Then for the next one, let's do maybe speakers. For the price, let's do, I don't know, 50 bucks. And then for the inventory, let's say we have 100 on hand. And then for the next item, let's go ahead and say we have some monitors. So like computer monitors, for the price for those, let's say $200. And I forgot my dollar sign. And then for the inventory, let's go ahead and say that we have 27 of them. And then for the next item, let's go ahead and say we have headphones, so headphones. Let's say they're fancy like Bose or something, so they're $400. And let's say the inventory for this, let's say we only have seven. And then another item could be maybe like printers. Let's say the price is going to be, mm, let's say a hundred bucks for a printer. And then the inventory, let's say we have 90 of them. And then another item, let's say we have, I don't know, something like a USB cable, okay? And let's say the price for that is, I don't know, nine bucks. And then the inventory for that, let's say we have 500 of them because they sell really quickly. Let's also do maybe like a router. So a router, let's say the price on this is maybe $350, something like that. And let's say the inventory that we have on hand, let's say there's 23. And then let's do two more of these. So let's think about this. If we're in like an electronic store, let's say we had something like a wireless, wireless keyboard, something like that. Let's let the price for that be, I don't know, 20 bucks, something simple. And then the inventory can be 55. For the last item, let's say we have some fans and let's set the price for that to something like, I don't know, let's say $35. And let's say our inventory for that is, let's say six. Okay, so that's nice and easy. We know that we can use a for loop to go through this guy, but basically if we're doing the standard with i, and let's say we start off with i being zero, I'm gonna be grabbing this entire thing, right? But I might wanna print these out individually. So we know we would need something like, let's say store inventory with the brackets, let's say zero, and then let's say one, okay, another set of brackets after that to get this specific item, okay? And then I would do store inventory with brackets of zero, okay, and then brackets of one to get this item, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and do something like a for loop. 
and I'm going to let i be equal to zero. Again, that's the starting point of any array. And then I want store inventory dot length. So I'm going to say i is less than store inventory dot length. Okay. And then lastly, I want to do i plus plus because I want to increment by one each time. Now, if I just console dot log, and I meant to hit console, so console dot log, and I just do store inventory, and I use my brackets and I put i in there. Again, the problem is it's going to grab this whole thing each time where I might want to just print the individual items. Okay. So let's go ahead and see this really quickly. Let's clear this and let's run this guy. And again, you get exactly what I said. So basically, let me kind of drag this up just a little bit. You have your items here, your computer, your price, your inventory, but it's all as an array, right? So you get all this stuff. Okay. So let's pop this back open and let's see how we can fix this. Basically, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to make a little if statement. And I'm going to say if i is greater than zero, then I'm going to put my little border in. Okay, so I don't want it on the first guy, but after the first guy, I want it to make a little border each time. So console.log, I'll put a little border here. Okay, that's just for readability. That's completely optional. So I'm going to set up another little for loop. And now I'm going to do let j equal zero. Let's think about the condition here, though. I want to loop through the individual parts of this array here that I'm getting. So how can I get that? Well, I get that with store inventory i. So I want store inventory with brackets with i inside dot length. That way later on, if I add something to one of these guys, but not the other ones, it's basically dynamic. It's going to keep up with that. So I want to do something like j is less than store inventory, let's say i, okay, dot length. Okay, so whatever that is. Again, we just saw that when we printed this to the console. So in this case, right now, each one of these guys, the length is three. So it's going to basically be like j is less than three here. Okay, so let me put a semicolon here and just do j plus plus, okay? And then open up my code block and let's come in here and let's put this in here. And so basically what I wanna do now is console.log store inventory i, but then also j, okay? So let's pause for a minute because I know this can get quite confusing. So if you're lost, it's okay. So first, we're setting up our little for loop. This is the outer loop, i is zero. And basically we set up this condition where i is less than store inventory dot length. Okay, so that's how long we want this guy to run for. And then basically each time the loop is done, we're gonna do i plus plus. Okay, so we're starting off by just saying if i is greater than zero, so that's after the first iteration, we wanna put a little border there. Again, that's optional. So inside of this for loop is where the magic happens. Basically with this console.log here where we have store inventory with i and then j, if this guy is zero and this guy is zero, if we come back up here, you're gonna get this is zero, right? The for the bigger guy, and then this is zero for the little guy. So you're basically gonna get item computer, right? Then J is gonna get updated and you're gonna get price 1500, and then it's gonna get updated and you're gonna get inventory 25, okay? So basically once that's done its job, we're gonna come back up here, we're gonna update I, I is gonna be one now. So when we come back down here, we're gonna print our border, okay? And then we're basically gonna say, when we're console.logging, you have I that's one and this guy that's zero. So if we go to one, now we're here and this guy's zero, right? So we're gonna get speakers. Then J is gonna update. We're gonna get $50 for the price. Then the inventory is gonna be 100, so on and so forth until we work our way through this entire array. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm just gonna delete that for spacing and pop this open and clear this. And let's go ahead and run this. And you see it goes through all of these. So I'm gonna go back up to the top. So you have your first item, which is a computer, the price $1,500, the inventory is 25, okay? And then you have your speakers, same thing for all of it. It just goes through the whole thing. And again, this isn't a perfect example. There's much better ways to do what I just did. We're going to see this when we get to objects. But basically for right now, this is the best we can do if we wanted to do something like this. And it's a good way to just practice going through these loops inside of other loops.